Hi, I'm Aparna and this project is about object tracking using the Lucas Canary tracker for computing optical flow. So how I'm going to go about explaining this project is uh, first I'm going to start uh, with some basic concepts and terms. Uh, I will give a brief introduction to motion tracking and the challenges behind it. Um, I'll then talk about the methodology used in this project for motion tracking. This will involve a brief overview of the steps involved in the algorithm. Uh, it will also involve a demonstration of the code in MATLAB. So what is motion tracking? Motion tracking involves recognizing a feature of interest and uh, tracking it through a sequence of frames. So salient feature here refers to any feature that is of interest to us in an image. Now, uh, there are various important applications like facial detection, surveillance purposes, traffic estimation uh, to figure out where there's excessive traffic. Um, all of these applications use motion tracking. And um, another way to phrase this would be that um, motion tracking is when an object is monitored for spatial and temporal changes through a sequence of frames. It is always important to know what are the important challenges involved while designing a particular algorithm for an application. So some uh, important challenges um, that we could face while designing a motion tracking algorithm is the rapid movement of object across frames that would make it difficult to track. Sometimes the object would change its orientation across different frames and sometimes the illumination is not the same through all the frames. And um, another challenge could be that when you're tracking complex features like facial expressions, um, another um, challenge could be when um, you're trying to track an object in a background that interferes with the object that is being tracked. Now that we looked at the challenges, we understand that there is a need to address these challenges and therefore there is a need for a robust and efficient um, object tracking algorithm that can possibly address these challenges. In this project, I'm going to attempt to um, explore one of the techniques for object tracking. Um, this algorithm would involve two primary steps. The first step uh, would involve uh, using a suitable feature detection algorithm that would um, extract and detect uh, an interesting feature in an image. Um, I'm using harris Connor detector in this particular project and the next stage would be to use the Lucas Canardi algorithm for computing optical flow which can then be used to track the interest point. So what is uh, the harris Connor detect algorithm all about? Uh, so this algorithm is about detecting corners which um, can be accounted as interest points or salient features in an image. Now corner simply put is just an intersection of two edges and this algorithm that is a Harris corner detector gives a mathematical representation for this concept. So um, this equation here is the equation for the Harris corner matrix. Now, using uh, another formula, we can find the cornerness value of this particular matrix. R is the cornerness value that I spoke about in the previous slide, where M is the matrix that we calculated in the previous slide. And this formula represents um, what we call a cornerness value, which indicates whether or not a particular point represents a corner. So, um, Mathematically, if the cornerness value that is R computed by this formula represents uh, a value which is greater than a given threshold, then we can categorize that particular point as a corner. Here I'm going to go over the algorithm a little more in detail, which would help me when I'm giving you the demonstration in MATLAB. So the very first step uh, in this algorithm would be to find the image x and the y derivatives which would represent the image gradient in the x and the y direction. Now once uh, we calculate this in step 2 we find the product of the derivatives which is ix square, iy squared and ixy. Now as you can see in this formula 
the matrix that the Harris matrix is represented by this formula for which you need to find the summation of the product of derivatives which would be the next stage once we calculate this matrix we then need to find the corner s using this equation now I'd like to say add a little note about this window function now this function in the simplest case can be understood as a single pixel or uh, a single pixel window which is run across the entire image um, this is in the simplest case now once we've computed this uh, matrix mxy we can find the corner value using this formula we you find the determinant of this matrix and subtract it with k which is a constant and find the trace of this matrix when this corner value exceeds a given threshold one can conclude that it is definitely a corner So here I'm going to show you the implementation of the Harris corner algorithm. Uh, so first I read the image, use the previt filter to calculate the image x gradient and the image y gradient. This is done by convol convolving the image with the appropriate filter. And I then use uh, Ga the Gaussian filters to smoothen the image. After which I find ix square, iy square as I mentioned in step 1 and 2. Now using the formula that we already discussed, um, I calculate the corner value. Now um, the size of the filter that I have chosen is size 5 but you can pick whatever size that you want. And this size is with reference to uh, the, a maximum filter which is used to ensure that I don't get redundant corner values. So this filter would check for uh, its neighborhood and just uh, return the maximum corner in a neighborhood and only if a particular corner value is the maximum within its neighborhood and if it is greater than a given threshold I um, indicate that it's a corner and I get the row and the column in, in the indices of that particular corner so let me just run this with a particular image and show you So this is the output uh, obtained. Now that we've completed step one of the algorithm, which was to use the Harris corner detector to detect salient features in an image, which was the detection stage, we will now move on to the tracking stage. Now for this tracking stage, we use the Lucas Canardi algorithm, which helps calculate the optical flow vectors. Now what is optical flow? Optical flow is really the motion of features across frames due to the relative motion between the scene and the camera. Now, um, when a pixel gets displaced, uh, which happens when there is motion, uh, these vectors indicate the direction of the displacement. Now, this computation can help us in motion tracking. Consider an image i of x comma y that undergoes a displacement that can be represented by u comma v. Um, we can then represent this image once it undergoes this displacement by this equation where h of x comma y is the image after displacement. u and v represents the displacement of the pixel. Now the idea is to use this equation to find the motion or the displacement at every pixel which is u comma v now how do we use this equation to solve for u and v now uh, using taylor's expansion and introducing some important constraints lucas and canardi found that this equation could indeed be solved to find u and v at every pixel so some important constraints that they introduce is uh, one is the brightness consistency constraint where he assumes that all the pixels have constant, consistent brightness um, through all the frames. Another important constraint that they introduce is a spatial coherence constraint, where he assumes that um, all the neighbors of a pixel have the same displacement, the same u and v values. Now, using these constraints, they found this equation where, which could be solved to find u and v which is the displacement 
here i'm going to go over the algorithm in detail which can be used to compute uh, optical flow using the equations that i explained in the previous slide now the steps involved um, are as follows that is the first step would be to find the image x and y derivatives we then find the image difference between the two images now note that the two images that i talk about is uh, two consecutive frames in a sequence of frames the next step would be to smoothen these components that is the image ix component the image iy and the difference image now linear equations uh, for each pixel should be solved and we should calculate the eigen values and depending on these eigen values we would solve them using the kramer's rule and then plot the optical flow vectors obtained now this would be clearer when i explain and show you the demonstration in matlab here i'm going to talk about the course to find registration so the nature of the lucas canardi algorithm is to track uh, very small changes or motions across frames now in cases where uh, the speed of the motion is too high or the displacement is too high we could use the iterative approach where um, we represent the image in gaussian pyramids uh, of different levels or uh, that is yeah as i said it's helpful for uh, tracking uh, larger movements now the idea is to this the solution to be able to track a larger movement is to reduce the resolution of the image uh, which is what we do with uh, the pyramidal representation so here i'm going to be talking about uh, the implementation for motion tracking using um, harris corner and uh, the optical flow using the lucas canardi method uh, so this uh, follows the iterative approach where i construct a three level gaussian pyramid for the input images so image 1 and image 2 uh, are the first and the second frames in a sequence of frames and i construct uh, three levels for each of these images so if you go to the implementation of the gaussian pyramid script here all it does is it reduces the resolution of the input image by three levels um so it just it's a very simple implementation that uses sampling to reduce the resolution of the image and uh, i write these uh, reduced images uh, to separate files that can then be read by the next script so the first step is to find the gaussian implementations of my input image uh, and then i call the optical flow code um so now this optical flow um what it does is um in steps that i uh, already mentioned before so first um i read the two frames and then uh, these are all some simple initializations that are needed for the next few steps uh, i find the image x and the image y derivative by constructing some kernels now there are many ways to find image x and y derivatives that can be explored i am using a gaussian x kernel and a gaussian y kernel uh, applying using the filter to function in matlab to apply this filter and get the image x and y derivatives uh i then compute the difference between the two image frames uh it was a step 2 that i spoke about in the previous slide um once the difference is computed i smoothen all the obtained images uh using a gaussian kernel mm. now once the smoothening is done i apply the harris corner algorithm uh to obtain the rows and con uh, column indices of the corners now the number of rows and the columns will obviously be the same and hence I've, i'm uh, iterating over uh, either you can use either the row length or the column length so i iterate over all the harris corner indices obtained returned by this algorithm now for each of these um, corner points i compute and calculate this matrix it's initially initialized to zero all zeros 
uh, and then I keep getting the sum of the pixel uh, and its neighborhood um, computations for these products so this would give me this matrix um, which using which uh, I can use the Kramer's rule to obtain the values of u and y so uh, let me quickly show you what this would look like let me run the motion tracking algorithm so this is the output obtained now um, these are the corners detected for the three levels uh, of the Gaussian pyramid for the input image and these are the corresponding optical flow images now as you can see um, for each of these corners I have found out what the optical flow looks like and the this um, graph is quite accurate in in indicating the motion of the two objects that are mainly of interest um, now these are the lower resolution images and if you find if you look at optical flow vectors you'll find that they still represent quite accurate information especially this you'll be surprised to see that uh, it does represent um, information that is accurate to an extent uh, so what we can take from this is that uh, lower resolution could uh, be definitely be used uh, for to find the optical flow vectors especially in cases where the speed of the motion is too high when um, a higher resolution image would probably not give us satisfactory results so in conclusion i evaluated a motion tracking technique that involved combining both the harris corner detector and the lucas kennedy optical flow method and um, i found that this combination technique um, is more efficient than a technique that would involve finding the optical flow, flow vectors for all the pixels in an image or uh, the efficiency improvement uh, obtained was 65.5 percent when i compared a technique that did not um, track only corners and and found the optical flow vectors for all the pixels in an image so in applications like uh, embedded applications where the execution time is uh, critical it uh, would probably be desirable to have an algorithm that um, would track only those feature points that are of interest to us uh, another important conclusion is um, that uh, for images where uh, the speed of the motion of the object is very high we, we could use the iterative approach where um, decomposing the image into lower resolution images uh, and then tracking those images can provide uh, sufficient results for us in case of higher speeds of motion. Thank you.